Oaxaca is a beautiful place to live for art, culture, and food, and to experience the richness of Mexican culture. With great food, walkable neighborhoods, and an abundance of incredible cultural sites, Oaxaca has a lot to offer for expats, digital nomads, and retirees looking for comfortable, affordable living. So how much does it cost to live in Oaxaca? If you plan to cook most of your meals and live in a cheap apartment or hostel, I recommend at least $800 per month. If you are living with a year lease and eat out at local restaurants for most meals, $1,200 to $1,800 per month is comfortable. Most long-term nomads and expats I know live within this range. For living in a furnished Airbnb, paying weekly or month to month and eating out all your meals, you can live on $1,900 per month. The food in Oaxaca is renowned for its complex flavors and rich cultural heritage. The culinary traditions are a blend of indigenous and Spanish influences, featuring a wide variety of unique ingredients, complex sauces, and cooking techniques, passed down through generations. The first time I've stopped at this nice little rooftop restaurant in my new neighborhood, and we'll check it out. And eating out in Oaxaca is an adventure. There is no shortage of amazing restaurants in amazing settings. Unique restaurants often feature traditional Mexican architecture and decor, with bright, colorful walls, tiled floors, and rustic wooden furniture. Many also have outdoor seating areas, allowing diners to enjoy the city's pleasant climate while enjoying their meal. The kombucha is 40 pesos, the breakfast is 80 pesos for the breakfast burritos. So 100 pesos, about $5 for breakfast. Good. Restaurants in Oaxaca are very affordable. You can get a good meal at a cheap restaurant for less than $3. A meal at a nice, inexpensive restaurant costs just $6. This is a nice restaurant that serves organic and vegan items. So the meal of the day came with a drink, which was lemon cucumber. The entree was a pasta dish with asparagus and portobello mushrooms with an almond cream sauce. Came with a nice salad that's got several different types of mixed greens, the tomato vegetable soup, and it also came with a dessert that was like a frozen berry mint, and all of it is 120 pesos total, so about $6. While a meal for two people at a mid-range restaurant costs just $30. A pint of domestic beer at a restaurant is about $1.50, and a bottle of good quality wine is about $12. In the Santa Domingo neighborhood, the heart of the city, you'll find many bars serving the local specialty, mezcal. This alcoholic beverage, similar to tequila, was invented in the area, and today more than 70% of all mezcal is made in the state of Oaxaca. If you're a connoisseur of fine drinking, check out the dedicated mezcal bars, as well as the many high-end cocktail bars. Also, make sure to try mole, is my favorite Mexican dish. This is a thick, rich sauce made from as many as 30 ingredients, and Oaxaca is renowned for its many varieties. I just got the enchiladas Oaxacan, 115 pesos and 35 pesos for the lemon water. This is my favorite coffee shop on this side of town, and uh, baristas that really know how to make a good cup of coffee and a good coffee bean. So I'll grab a latte here. So they've got a lot of different ways to make coffee here. He's got the AeroPress set up. 
pipes heating water for that. They got the vacuum up here. So he's been timing how long the water is in contact with the coffee bean. The big thing about coffee is it all has to do with how fine the bean is ground, how fresh the bean is, how long it's been roasted, and then the contact time of the water with the bean, and then the pressure that is put through, or whether there's no pressure or is pressure, when the water is pushed through the coffee. So that all changes the flavor and characteristic of your final cup of coffee. Right now I'm staying at my place in Xochimilco and I'm walking back towards the Santo Domingo Church, the area I was staying at before. And one of the things that's really nice is I'm in a quieter community, just across one main busy street, but I'm very close to the area I used to stay. A 15 minute walk, maybe less. And here's where I'm going right now. It's a coffee shop on the bottom and a restaurant up on the top. So there's a coffee shop here and the restaurant's up here. Ah, look at the view here. We're just a few blocks away from the big church. You can see where we are in Centro here. We're surrounded by the taller mountains. There's plenty of nice neighborhoods that as you climb outside of the city, not far away, even just 15 minute drive, you can be up higher in the cooler areas with amazing views. But uh, this is Centro where we're at right now. Um, this is Chilaquiles and this is for some, I don't know what. <laughs> This is a very common Oaxacan style breakfast. I've got the egg with the black beans and uh, avocado. And then I got a pistachio yogurt smoothie. And I believe this was 83 pesos and 80 pesos. So 163 pesos total for breakfast. With a year lease, a one bedroom apartment in the city center cost about 450 US dollars a month, while a three bedroom apartment cost about 650 US dollars per month. Outside the city center, a one bedroom apartment cost about $300 a month, while a three bedroom apartment cost about $560 a month. Here's a tour of the studio apartment I'm staying at now. The price is $154 a week, and it's a complete studio apartment with a queen size bed here. And I really like the fact that it's an apartment, it's equipped with everything you need. It's got complete storage, plenty of drawers, places to hang up my clothing, and a place to store my paddle board. The ironing board is there too. So I've got the ironing board and the paddle board stored there. And I also have a kitchen, complete kitchen, so I can cook some of my own food, and that'll be very handy. Small toilet, the shower. Basic utilities for about a thousand square foot apartment, including utilities, heating, cooling, water, and garbage pickup will cost about $60, with an additional $25 a month for internet. This apartment is Semilla Bojo. Bojo. All right. Oh. <laughs> well, it fluctuates. So we go from our lowest amount on low season, it would be 2,200 the mm -hmm. night. And the highest we've had it is like 3,600 per night. If someone wants to rent the place for a month and they have a pet, we rent it in 35,000 mm -hmm. high season. And say a pet and four people, mm -hmm. it'd be 35,000. So if it was two people um, without a pet, we'll go down to like 28. This lovely space is called Semilla Indy. Both, both places were actually christened by my political niece who is from <laughs> Huchitan who did the murals outside. Nice. Tía, este departamento es muy indie. And I said, indie? What do you mean indie? What's that mean? <laughs> and she informed me that it meant industrial. So that's why the name of the whole space together, if you rent both sides, is Semilla de Mostaza, mustard seed, because of the mustard color outside. Uh -huh. 
and I was planting and doing this basically based on faith. When I started, it was like, I don't know where the money's coming from, mm -hmm. I don't know where the furniture's coming from, and it all, it all, worked, it out. all worked out. Per night, mm -hmm. um, the, this, pla this space goes from the lowest price is like 1,800 pesos per night, and the highest it's been is 2,800. Two people per month, low season, mm -hmm. um, 26,000. High season, 29. Mm -hmm. You can either stay in Semilla Bojo and have a more minimalistic, funky, cool, fresh type of um, ambience or Semilla Indie which was christened by Steph mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we've got two different ambiances here mm -hmm. which of course you can rent the entire place. For nomads and vacationers an Airbnb in Centro will start around $150 per week. Big discounts can be found in the summer months especially if you book a month at a time. And a lot of the apartments and villas that are divided up into apartments look like this on the outside. It'll just be a wall along the street and may not look like much, but then when you go through the doors, it opens up to a nice villa. So how much does it cost for a family of seven? Who's had a good time in Mexico? <laughs> the Elliott family will share their experience. There's not just two of you, there's a whole crew of you, right? There's a whole crew of us. <laughs> so how many of you are there? Well, we have five, so we usually only eat out once a day. And in Mexico, it's very affordable. We can, we can eat usually for $30 or less for all seven of us. For a decent Mexican meal. Sometimes we'll spend about $50 for a little bit nicer restaurants. Because we essentially were trying to do what we did in the States. Yeah. Um, because our house is rented out in the States. And so thankfully we have that covered. We have income coming in from that. Yeah. So I think we budgeted about $3,000 a month for lodging mm -hmm. and then $2,000 for food. Mm -hmm. In the States we spend about $2,000 a month on food. Mm -hmm. And so. Ideally, we keep it less than that. We try to do Airbnbs as much uh -huh. as we can. Yeah. Um, With a big family, it's way more cost effective yeah. than hotels. Right. But then also, from just the standpoint of eating out every meal, like we uh -huh. don't want to eat out every meal, it's way more cost effective to eat in. And Airbnbs are going to have, you know, kitchens yep. and places for us to cook our meals. And it's much healthier. And we've found pretty inexpensive Airbnbs that are in safe neighborhoods that, um, that have three bedrooms, which is plenty for us. Uh -huh. And like, like Lindsay said, we'll plan to cook at least lunch or dinner every day uh -huh. and then have breakfast. So we usually only eat out once a day. Oaxaca, Mexico has emerged as a popular destination for hipsters, visitors, and expats seeking a unique cultural experience. The city's vibrant art scene, culinary traditions, and bohemian vibe have attracted a growing community of young creatives and entrepreneurs. Hipster-friendly cafes and bars can be found throughout the city, serving up locally sourced coffee and craft beer while trendy boutiques and artisanal markets offer a range of unique and stylish goods. We're playing the music, playing record albums. This is really cool. You can come in here, pick out an album and play. Yeah, very nice. Oaxaca's street art scene also adds to the city's hipster appeal, with colorful murals and graffiti adorning many of the city's walls. The diverse art scene spans centuries of indigenous traditions and modern influences. The city is home to numerous museums, galleries, and art centers that showcase the works of both established and emerging artists. This is very typical of what you'll see around here. 
there's an artist here on this corner. He lives here, he does his art here, and has a shop here, everything. And Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo se llama? Loco. So let's take a look. So right here is the screen printing where he does his printing, the inks, pressures. Un tórculo so para look. grabado. Let's look at some of the stuff here. One of a kind art right here. Inspiration, Gustav Klimt. Este, diferentes autos, diferentes artistas. And this, this you printed here. Okay. And cuánto, cuánto cuesta? Este está en cuatro cincuenta. Look at all these amazing t-shirt designs. These are original art prints and designs, silk screens. Really high quality, really creative art, and so many options. There's a couple of fun things that I like seeing around here. There's the Lucha Libre poster. Folk art includes textiles, ceramics, and wooden carvings, many of which are still produced using ancient techniques passed down through generations. So right here where they're making these blankets, you can actually buy them also. And a queen size costs 850 pesos. That's about what you'd pay for a blanket made from China at Walmart in the United States. But instead you get something that's made here in Mexico on location by a family that's been doing it for five generations with natural materials, handmade. I really think these are a great thing to pick up one or two to bring home as a, and use at your house at home. The Alebrijes painting technique from Oaxaca involves creating wooden sculptures of animals and fantasy creatures and hand painting them with vibrant colors and intricate details. It's eye-catching in appearance and has become an iconic form of Mexican folk art. Overall, Oaxaca offers a laid-back and creative atmosphere that has become increasingly popular among the hipster crowd in recent years. Carter, the first stop that we did, mm -hmm. it was made here, this kind of decoration. The paper or tissue that we can see as a decoration is very Mexican. We uh, use that kind of paper, tissue paper, actually it's in plastic, but it's, we call it a um, papel picado. It's uh, especially when it's a festivity for a decoration, always we can find that kind of uh, decoration all over the city and especially for the Day of the Dead or when we have a uh, marriage, a, a wedding or a, a baptism, a, a birthday, depends on the family. Right now I'm on my way up to get some breakfast and one of the things I love here in Oaxaca is you've got these beautiful streets with murals painted on the sides the bougainvillea and plants everywhere, cool rock work. And the restaurant I'm heading up to has a beautiful balcony with a great view and very reasonable prices. So that's pretty typical around this area. Check out this. Here's the local stone that is quarried from here in Oaxaca. And you can see it's kind of natural greenish and pinkish hues. Really a beautiful stone. I really like when you can still see it, the way it was put together originally. The bricks in between here, the larger quarried stone. Got some nice ornamentation here. I don't think you see a, that color of blue in a tree very often. Very unusual. <laughs> I'm 
staying in the downtown central area right now and this neighborhood is where all the local commerce is going on this is where a lot of the restaurants in the town come to buy their local produce and a lot of vendors set up on the streets and the markets just take a look at all the activity here where do most expats live in Oaxaca? What are the safest neighborhoods? What are the best areas to stay in? What are the best neighborhoods for food, bars, restaurants, shopping, and nightlife? Here is a list of my pick of the best Oaxaca neighborhoods for visitors. And these neighborhoods are great for families also. For in-depth coverage of these neighborhoods, you won't want to miss my next video, Where to Stay in Oaxaca, Best Areas and Neighborhoods. I'll show you restaurants, places to shop, and give you tours of places I stayed, and I'll include the prices. It's easy to get by in Oaxaca without a car, since the town is so small and walkable. However, if you'd like to get out and see the area, you will need to rent a car or catch an Uber or taxi. Taxi prices average about a dollar per mile with a starting price of about two dollars. Oaxaca has a dry, warm climate and high temperatures average about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. April tends to be the hottest month where temperatures hit the low 90s Fahrenheit. The summer months are the wettest, with June seeing the highest average rainfall. Throughout Mexico, medical care is available at a fraction of the cost of the United States and Canada. Visits to the doctor are about $40 at a private medical facility. If you're a full-time expat or retiree who settles in Oaxaca and becomes a resident, you can enjoy the low rates of Mexico's public health care system, including specialist care and dental care. In Oaxaca, crime rates are lower than in many American cities, making it a relatively safe destination for travelers. No travel destination is entirely risk-free. Always use your best judgment and trust your instincts. We had some friends and family that were not happy about us coming here because they felt like it wasn't safe. Yeah. Because the news will tell you all the, all the things, right, of how it's yeah. not safe. But um, we've traveled a lot in Mexico and we've really not ever felt unsafe. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. If you do it smart, which would be the same wherever you are in this world, mm -hmm. um, safety is really not an issue. Finally, English is not widely spoken in Oaxaca, so I recommend brushing up on your Spanish. You don't need to be fluent, but a good knowledge of functional Spanish is helpful, as most of the locals you'll meet speak either Spanish or an indigenous language. If you have more information to share about Oaxaca, including recommendations for restaurants, places to stay, or local attractions, please leave a comment. Your support helps us continue to make these free videos to help digital nomads and expats find a place to call home. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more cost of living guides to beautiful locations around the world, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to turn on the notifications and visit our website at www.livingoverseas.tv.